<laughs> so. Hi, I'm Dr. Cindy Dupuy. I have a PhD in learning disabilities, um, and I do diagnostic assessment, a uh, little bit of intervention, and advocacy. Um, and I'm also an adult with dyslexia and dysgraphia. Hi, my name is Kim Sharman, and I work with children who have dyslexia, dysgraphia, ADHD. I've been doing this for 15 years, kids from kindergarten through college. Awesome. So our conversation started today because of I'm another side of the conversation. I am still laughing at you because make the comment that you made. Well, okay, fine. I get confused. Well, say it. Say it. So we were talking about dysgraphia and how dysgraphia has a profound impact on students at school. And usually school districts don't really understand what it is. And she's laughing because I said, what tests are there for dysgraphia on the WISC when they do you know, your intellectual assessment? And there are none, because that's not what it's supposed to do. And that's why she's laughing at me. So, Stop. yes, well, but your dysgraphia can affect aspects of your performance. Yes, for sure. Right? But it's not yes. specifically a test for dysgraphia. But we have right. one great subtest on both the WACE and the WISC that, uh, uh, yeah, and the WIPSI doesn't do it because WIPSI Whips has bug search and you just, you have this great little beep, 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 and you get to stamp the little bugs. It's hilarious. I love it. I wish I could do that test. Never heard that. It's, it's hilarious. And they have these daubers and you, it's like- Wait, the are you talking about like whack-a-mole on the WISC? What, what on is the this? WIPSI, the Weschler- uh, preschool and primary scales of intelligence, or however you say the acronym uh, correctly, I don't give it often enough that I can rattle that one off as fluidly as I can the whisk and the waist, but they have what's called bug search. And on one side, they have a bug, and then they have a row of bugs, and you have to find the exact match. And with this little dauber, you get to dab on the bug that's the exact match. So, so if they're not identifying the dysgraphia, what are the, what skill assessment are they dis, what are they okay. doing? So on bug search on the WIPSI, it is measuring your processing speed and it's measuring your attention. Okay. Because no test exists in isolation. I've only said that like two or three thousand million okay. times in my um life because everybody thinks, well, it's the comment you just made. You know, where's the test for dysgraphia in the intelligence test? And there, there isn't one. And so the whole purpose of the IQ test is to say, where should you be academically, right? And right. where to set that zero point, which is why it's so critical that you get that number right. But what do you know about me and IQ tests? How many IQ tests do I own? Hundreds. Not hundreds. <laughs> How many are there? I don't know. <laughs> I own just about every IQ test that it is legit, meaning, um, so there's one out there called the Detroit Test of Learning Apple. Anyway, it's a Detroit test. Um, and I hated it. Like I purchased it. I was like, I'm going to look at this. Let me do an eval. And they do an information subtest where you ask a question and you have to take the first response that the student gives. And there only is a certain amount of time that you're allowed to respond to the item. So all of our kids that have word retrieval issues, that tip of the tongue where they know they know a word and they can't come up with it to save their life. Like if they have low rapid naming scores, they would have a horrible time on that subtest, right? And it's an artificial barrier in that it's fast and easy to administer but it doesn't always get you a good accurate assessment of where a student is does that make and sense i know we've uh, we've mentioned this before in previous um classes but there's a reason why she has so many iq tests can you tell the parents why sometimes you have to give multiple iq tests over and over and over different ones I do not give the same child multiple. No, IQ not tests. the same. No, but sometimes you have to. When she still, I get multiple IQ tests because different IQ tests assess intelligence differently. So the Stanford Binet is a power test, meaning if you are making adequate progress or what is perceived to be adequate progress towards a response or an answer to the item, 
you're allowed to continue to work. So there's only one time subtest on the Stanford Binet. And if you do it in 30 seconds or you do it in two and a half minutes, it doesn't matter. You still get the same score. So as long as you don't exceed the upper time limit of that, if you come up with the right answer, you get credit. Unlike but the reason why you choose that one is because the kid has a deficit in that area and this eliminates the deficit from destroying the IQ number. Ideally, yes. And another reason, and another reason why you have to sometimes give alternate IQ tests is because when you do the additional subtests of academic skills, if the skill level is above the IQ, that's normally that's an indication that the IQ is an underestimation of their true ability. Now, so I say that because I see it day in and day out. I have yet to find many clinical psychologists who really think deeply about it. Like they're so into you're administering the IQ test and that's it, that they don't think beyond that. But let's let's back it up and let's talk about the coding subtest for a minute, okay? Which is okay. one of the subtests on the WISC, which is where we were going in the first place, because coding is the one subtest that can really begin to suggest that there may be a problem with dysgraphia. And remind everyone, Kim, dysgraphia is? It's a challenge with writing, brain communication with the fingers. And it's such an arduous uh, skill set that it takes away from, it, it takes a lot of other skills away from the student as they're trying to listen. My apologies. Um, and write. I got a really close up look of my hair there. I was reaching for my pens. So let's talk about, and we do some of this spontaneously, so we apologize if this is like digressing for all of you out there listening. So on the coding subtest, they have um, a series of boxes across the top and each of the boxes has a number in the top mark or top part and a special mark in the bottom part. And each number has its own special mark and any clinician out there who administers this test knows that I know the instructions too well because I almost repeated those verbatim without looking at the book. So for example, for one, we might have that. And for two, we might have that. And for three, we might have that. And for four, we might have that. And then down below, You've got a series of boxes and there's numbers in the top part and they're empty in the bottom part. And so you would fill in the numbers as you go across. And so for the four, you would put in this and for the one you put in this and for the three, you put in this, and for the four, you put in this, and then it measures it, okay? So if you're having issues getting what's in your head down through your hand, this particular subtest score could be very low. Now, since no test, no test occurs in isolation, there's no perfect measure of processing speed, there's no perfect measure in terms of graphomotor. What else could be affecting your performance on this, Kim? Um, well, we already talked about processing speed, um, orthographic, uh, the ability to hold well, the images in your processing head. speed. What is processing right. speed? Um, processing speed is the ability to pull information from your brain uh, rapidly. Yeah, it's that with a fast, response. how can I crunch what's coming at me? And you've probably met people who are like, you're going too fast, slow down, or they need more time um, to think through things. And so it measures processing speed. It also measures- but that's not a measure. You can have brilliant people that have slow processing speed, just so you know. Every single day, right? Yeah. Then it does measure visual, motor, integration. Um, which is how do I get what's in my head out through my hand, right? Yes. And then it measures two other things. I'll give you a hint. It's visual. Well, are you talking about orthographic or mm -hmm. visual motor? Visual uh, memory? 
Oh, visual memory. So I see it and I can connect them together. You could also throw in their verbal memory. So like I would say one diagonal, three plus, four minus, right? Like you can name it to help you get through it faster. Okay. Can we can we just tell them though, this relates similar to looking at a board uh, in a classroom and then looking down to take and notes. Of copy all of it, mm -hmm. which I'm horrible yeah. at. Okay. I, I do much better when I have my laptop and I can look and type simultaneously. Okay, there's one other thing that this measure pounds visual, on. Visual motor and visual memory coding. My favorite. What's the first thing I always ask about every single kid? <sighs> really? Oh, attention deficit. Oh, geez. Yes. So, um, if you're having a hard time paying attention and you're having a hard time um, thinking and staying on task in the two minutes of doing this, you can kind of zone in, zone out um, and not have a good strategy and lose track of where you are in the whole nine yards. So the coding subtest can be low. Oh, let me spell it right. The coding subtest could be low for a whole host of reasons, and you don't necessarily know why. And people come back and say, oh, it's a processing speed test. Yes, it's named processing speed. That's the index score that it's under. But there's so many other things that go into it that it is not just a one thing. So you were teasing me that they don't do any visual, that they don't do any kind of dysgraphia it's not, test. It's not specifically testing for right. dysgraphia. But it, what's great for the parents to know is that when they see that low score in that coding, that's a hint to you. It's, yeah. a, it's a flag. It's a it flag. Anywhere from pink to red as a flag that there's something going on. Right. Okay. And with that, we'll see you soon. Leave comments, leave questions. We'd love to hear from you.